okay. So, life is interesting. Life throws tons of lemons at us. Life sometimes throws rocks and boulders and just dishmer a lot. Okay, life is life. And life is not perfect. We can't plan for everything in life. That's just a fact of life. Um, and I just... And I didn't even write down all the points I want to make just because sometimes it, rabbit trails happen. The points I want to get to are from rabbit trails. So, we'll just jump in. Let's just, let's just get it. One of the first points I wrote down, and my mom helped me write down from after I was discussing things with her, was, you aren't your past mistakes. And my mom actually told me this quote that she found, and it's, you're more than yesterday. And to be honest, a lot of these things that we're gonna, I'm going to talk about with you is they all go together in some way, shape, or form. And that is things I've learned. One of the huge learning tools that I'll keep mentioning is this book, which is by Sadie Robertson, and this is the Live Original book. This book made a huge impact in my life um, last year. Uh, I was always someone who was insecure, always thought about what other people thought, just crazy amount, and I let, I made, everyone makes choices and mistakes, I made some as well, just, you can't go back and change it, um, a lot of things happen to you, you know, people get emotionally abused, people get physically abused, sexually abused, I mean, there are so many ways people get damaged these days, and it doesn't even have to be abuse. It can be they got hurt or whatever. If you, one of the things I learned is if you don't let go of what happened, it will ruin your future. If you don't let what happened in your past relationship that went wrong or whatever go, your future one is in danger. Because we have a tendency to have tons of baggage, and everyone has their own baggage, but we have a tendency to bring our baggage and expect the person to have the same baggage, so to say. Um, I learned, and I, at one point, was emotionally abused. I've gone through a lot. I let, I was not a strong person, and I let what people thought of me determine my worth and stuff, and we'll get into that later, but um, I have been cheated on more times than I can count, okay? Um, just in past relationships. And for a while, I was like, why me? What did I do to blah, 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 blah? You know, typical things people ask when they get cheated on. And the emotional abuse thing, like, there's repercussions for bad things that happen, like what you do has an effect on someone, and I was scared to get in fights with people and arguments and disagreements and to tell people when something was bothering me or I was like, that isn't right, like, you know, just simple things in a relationship, and I let that baggage come in with me into several different relationships. And that was not good. The thing is, is when you get into a new relationship, that person, that person you're with now, that person you're looking into being in a relationship with, that person is not the person you were with. Not at all. Period. They may sometimes do something that triggers you to think that, but they're not that person. They're a new person. And as Trent Shelton says, he's like, don't let the heart that didn't love you keep you from the person who will or does. And that happens so often. I've done it. I'm, I'm, I've been there. I've done that. I've, I've let my past determine my future. And that is one thing that I seriously learned is you have to let go. And the thing is, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's a breeze in the wind. My chair keeps sinking. Um, 
But how are you supposed to move forward if you keep bringing it up and expecting that person to be who you were with in the past? They're not that person. It's unfair and it's showing lack of faith in them and trust in them if you keep doing that. Like, it, and it can be hurtful to them because they're like, you know, and I'm not saying everyone is perfect or whatever, but I am saying to the people who actually care about you and love you, that can be hurtful because they're like, I'm not that person. And you'll be like, yeah, well, so-and-so did this to me or so-and-so cheated on me or so-and-so was this way. I know you're not that person, but so-and-so, stop, okay? They're not that person. If they actually care about you, they don't want to hurt you. In fact, they want to help you and build you. They're not that person in the past. You need to let go of what happened in the past instead of you letting it control you, um, letting all the bad things that happened to you. And this can be in any situation, not just relationships, but in general in life. You have to learn to let go, forgive, and you need to learn to use it as a stepping stone. Because there's two ways that could go. You can either use it as a stepping stone or you can use it as a cement block that drowns you. And that can either happen rapidly drowning or slowly. And it can affect your life. And that is not a fun place to be in at all. Um, another thing that kind of ties with somewhat what I was mentioning. I guess some of these things are kind of like tied together. Um, you are not defined. You are not defined from your past and your worth does not come from your past or what people think, what people say, what you think of yourself or the mistakes you've made, the choices you've made. Um, it doesn't, it, none of that comes from that. It doesn't matter. Your worth doesn't come from your job position. It doesn't come from how much money you have. Your worth comes from God. And a lot of people aren't going to like that, but you know what? Your worth doesn't come from other people. It doesn't. Because for a lot of people on this earth are ridiculous. And you have worth. And I was someone who let myself, because of lack of confidence and stuff, feel and act as if, and let people tell me that I didn't have worth. And that is so, that makes me feel so frustrated, like not even frustrated, just kind of disheartened that I let people do that. I have worth. My worth doesn't come from me. My worth doesn't come from the rumors that are said about me, which that's a whole nother topic, but my worth doesn't come from I'm struggling or my worth doesn't come from, you know, the fights I'm fighting or... Uh, the, you know, what people say about me, what friends I have, or what my part, or if I have a partner or not, who my partner is, what they say about me. Um, your worth doesn't come from that. Your worth comes from God, and there's no other way to put that. You know, your, your worth so much more than most people will try to let you think, to be honest. People like to tear down each other, and, you know, it just, God loved me so much, and he loved you so much that he died on the cross, and, you know, we need to, we are not, you know, special gods or whatever, but we do have some worth. God wouldn't want you to stay, you know, God wouldn't want someone to stay in an abusive relationship. He cares about you too much. He loves you too much. God doesn't want you to keep beating yourself down because you made a mistake or you're letting people walk all over you or use you because he cares about you. You have worth. You are his child. And you have worth. It's... And that's one thing that was really hard for me to get a hold of. Because I let 
some of the most nasty rumors get to me and I was like, oh, I have no worth. Oh my gosh, what are people going to think of me? It doesn't matter what they think. My work doesn't come from them. In fact, because of the change in my mentality now, some of the rumors I hear make me laugh because I'm just like, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, anyone who knows me knows they're not true. And my work doesn't come from what they think or what they say or what I think or what I say. My work comes from him, not them. You know, and it, it, it's mind-blowing. Another thing is, it's okay to have bad days. It's okay not to have everything figured out. It's okay to, you know, it's okay if you have days where you feel off and you don't know why. And, or it's okay that your day just right and left seems to be blowing up in your face. You know, it's okay. Society, like, Kayla Nicholson just nailed it on some points when I watched her video was, um, society these days, you know, we look at Facebook first thing in the morning, as she said, and we see, for the most part, social media is where we put our highlights, you know, it's where we put our good days, our good face, um, our good makeup looks, our good hair days, or, you know, whatever. My face right now is like a greasy mess. I'm in sweatshirt and tank top and my hair is a greasy mess and pokey. I mean, it's not my best day. But that's what we view society for and we have kind of, I don't even know how to say it, but like society has made it almost seem like it's bad to have bad days. It's bad to not know why you're having an off day and that we have to have everything figured out and stuff like that. And certain personality types, you know, they just, they like to have structure, they like to know, they like to plan, they like... And... You know, you, you can't always have plans. And sometimes, you know, you need to embrace that you're not feeling okay, you're not okay, your day isn't okay, but... You also, with that being said, you also need to make sure you're not doing self-pitying all the time. It's okay to have your 15 minutes of crying and whatever, but if you're doing that all the time, that is so unhealthy. I have seen people um, just be so obsessed with self-pity and leaning on people all the time and looking for justification in what they people say or whatever and it's so so bad it's okay to have bad days but you need to make sure you're not doing self-pitying and dwelling on all the bad things all the time because that is not healthy how if you have a bad day it's okay it's okay to have bad days i'm to be honest i'm having it off a few months not really sure why. I mean, I have a few clues, but, you know, but it's okay. And on those days, you need to do small things that encourage you. Read your Bible, do devotions, pray, watch, you know, Christian movies, watch Dick Van Dyke a TV show. That's my go-to. Watch Disney, um, buy a candle, drink coffee, go to Starbucks, go to Dunkin' Donuts, read a book work out, you know, there's so many things that you could do that are just small, small, simple things that can make just a biggest impact. And sometimes you also need to remember that, you know, on bad days or off days or whatever, you can't, some days you can fully turn that day around. But it's okay if it's a day that you can't fully turn around that day around and make it great. Sometimes you need to let the bad day be a bad day and do small things in that day to make it better, not fix it, not make it, you know, not make it great and amazing and good, but make it better. Just simply, you know, even the small things I just told you a minute ago, candle, coffee, you know, whatever. Sometimes that's what you need to do. And, you know, you, you can't always fix things. I can't always fix things. And that's really hard as a people person is because I see people hurting and especially ones I care about, but even strangers, I see people hurting 
and I'm just like, ugh, it, it, I feel their hurt, and I want to fix it, but sometimes all you can do is just make the best out of that situation, or try to just simply be there for that person, do whatever you can to slightly encourage them, you know, whatever is helps that person the most, and you just gotta roll with it sometimes. Life throws lemons, and sometimes we wanna throw those lemons back. That's how I felt recently. Sometimes life throws a lot of snow at you, and you gotta, you know, plow through it. Life happens. You know? Um... Another thing I've noticed is... I look back at how I used to be, and it helps me understand people sometimes, just because I've been there, I've done that, and I find it funny when people don't, they don't believe me when I say things, uh, and it's either because, I think part of it is they don't want to hear it. You can't tell someone something, or help show someone something, or help someone when they don't want it been there, done that too. Um, been on both ends of trying to do that. Um, some people don't want to hear it. They know you're right, but they don't want to admit it because they don't want to do it. They don't want to, they don't want it to become real or whatever. And I look back, I was so insecure. And because of that, when I was with people, it made me feel better and it f- felt like my dad always told me, you can, you know how someone feels about you by how they treat you. Actions speak louder than words. And I didn't take that really in until, um, I gotta make sure my glasses is switched, um, later. And because of that, I got my justification of knowing someone was cared about me was by what they said and by telling me all the time how much they cared about me. And it made me feel better. And that they were right. Thing is, people can tell you as much as they want, how much they care about you, how much they love you, but in the end, it's their actions. I have been there. Hmm. I have been there for someone through thick and thin, through when we weren't talking, through when we were talking, to, I mean, a lot, and I've studied them way before they started studying me, and them wanting to constantly hear how much I care about them, why do I care about them, why do I respect them, why am I with them, why am I, wanting all those justifications and words, it kind of threw me back to when I was like that and I'm like it's because they're insecure you can't you can't find your security in people people will fail you people are people people are human people are sinners people make mistakes I make mistakes I I can't be the source of someone's happiness I can make them happy for a time I can help but I can't be someone's source of happiness because I'm a human and I make mistakes and I will fail them Unfortunately, I mean, I try not to, but there's no promises I can always be that perfect, because no one is perfect except for God. Um, and it's hard to see someone like that that I care about, but I've been there, so I understand. And sometimes people think they need to hear... You know, there's a time and place for being sweet and gentle, but telling them truth. But there's also certain times where you need to be brutally just blunt, straight honest. Like, you know, some people, they need to hear, oh, it's okay, you know, maybe you just need to do this differently, um, you know, whatever. You know, sometimes you just need to be sweet and gentle 
and sometimes you just need to be- Now listen here. <laughs> uh, that's wrong. Stop what you're doing right now. If you keep doing that, you're gonna go down a spiral and it's gonna be bad. Sometimes, you know, there's, there's two ways. And sometimes we think we need the soft, gentle way because that's what would make us feel better and comforted. But in reality, we need to hear the brutally honest part that's a little more harsh, the tough love, you know? It's kind of like, you know, if you have kids and they want to touch the stove, you're like, no, don't touch it. Because, you know, or, you know, you smack their hand to try to help them understand. That's tough love. Like, sometimes you just need to be a little more tough and brutally honest to help someone. And they won't always understand that or want that. Sometimes they just want, certain people want to just you to feed into their self-pity and oh comfort me and blah 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 when in reality you know what they need is a brutally honest to be like pull your head up okay you need to stop and this is how you fix it this is what you're doing wrong this is how you fix it you know people don't always like that we're human we like we there's something about humans that we love to self-pity, we love pity parties, we love, oh, it's me, and we love it. We love being miserable. Why? I, I don't really get why we like being miserable, but it's part of human nature to love being miserable. And that's not good. It's not good at all. The chair keeps sinking. It's not good at all. And... I don't always love getting tough love. But sometimes I need it. Sometimes you need it. Sometimes, you know, Bob over here needs it. I mean, everyone every once in a while needs some tough love. And that's how it is. Um, another thing is a positive mind. And I used to... It's so funny. When I was younger, I used to be so positive, I'm pretty sure I made people sick. Because I was just so overly positive. And then life happened, and I kind of lost my positivity. And I grew very... I could be po I, I tend to be better with helping other people with their things and their issues than I am with helping my own. That's just how I am. Um, so I'm good with being positive and helping other people be positive, but I really suck in myself. <laughs> Until I learned, like, got this book and started reading it, and one of the first things she starts talking about is a positive mind and to be happy. Because, um, if you watch Chuck Dynasty, Uncle Sai's, um, most famous quote is happy, happy, no, 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 that's the other one. Uh, Phil Roberts. <laughs> I'm like, needing a second cup of coffee. His, you know, one of the favorite quotes of Anyways Off Duck Dynasty is happy, happy, happy. And she talks about that. And she talks about how it's a choice. Lots of things are a choice. Like, I'm pretty sure some people are really tired of me being, it's a choice. Okay? It's a choice. You're choosing to be that way. You're choosing this. You gotta choose this. I'm pretty sure everyone's getting sick and tired of me being, it's a choice. But that's one of the biggest things from this book I picked up was it's a choice. Everything is a choice. It's a choice to have a positive mind. It's a choice to have a positive life. It's a choice to let your past have an effect on the now. It's a choice to, you know, what someone did to hurt you a while ago to still have an effect now on you. And rabbit trail. If you're letting your past from what people did to you in the past have effect now, you're letting them win. And that is something that I realized and I was like, I'm done. I'm done letting people in my past who hurt me or whatever have control over me now. I'm going to rise above it and try to make sure that I move forward because they're in the past for a reason. Like Edna Mode from Incredibles, I don't look back. I don't look on the past, darling. It distracts on the now. It does. You keep looking back, you're probably gonna stumble because you're not watching what's in front of you. Or you might, 
you know, if you keep looking backwards, you might miss some of the most beautiful, most amazing blessings in front of you or right beside you because you're looking back and you're focusing back there. You gotta keep moving forward as Mate Robin says, God bless America, Disney quotes, apply to everything, and Pixar. <laughs> but everything is a choice. You gotta choose to be happy. You gotta choose to have a positive mindset. You gotta choose to move forward. None of these things are easy. All of these take practice, but you gotta choose. If you don't want it, it's not gonna happen, but you gotta choose. It's a choice. 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 I did with the chance of meatballs. One. Everybody, it's a choice. <laughs> but seriously, I just. Hmm. So much going on right now. I'm trying to think if there's any other points that I have. I'm trying to think of what me and my mom will talk about. Like, real look. for you right now. I hope this video is of help. Um, yeah. If, I don't, I wouldn't say this is a gender specific book for like just females. Um, I would really suggest it. It's a super easy read though. Um, and I've highlighted in mine. No shame. Um, it helps rem mind me which parts really stick out to me. Um, but, and I haven't even finished it, I only, I stopped for a little bit, but, um, I highly suggest this book by Sadie Robertson. It made, um, so many points that really affected my life and changed my way of thinking. And it was really good. And, yeah. If I think of anything else, I'll probably either just add it to this video or do an entirely separate video. But, I hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope you have a fabulous week or whatever. And... Remember that you are more than the choices that you've made. You are more than yesterday. Each day is a new day. Choose to be positive, and it's okay to have bad days. And you are worth more than what we tend to allow society to tell us. You are loved, you have worth, you are special, Today you are you, there is no one alive who is you than you. And I will see you next time.